Margaret, please and Kate Kirst and talk to Richard Ray Brown. How much time for the questions? How much time? One, no way to one. A minute and a half. No way to let. What? Minute and a half. Minute and a half. Right. Sorry. Look, uh, Taoiseach, the European Union makes clear uh, its determination, if you like, to stand against Putin's uh, barbaric actions in Ukraine. I don't agree, in fact, I fundamentally disagree with the alliance that they uh, wish to advance with NATO, uh, but we all are horrified about what Putin is doing. Um, but then you look at what is happening today in Gaza, or in the last few days. Four schools attacked. 29 killed in just one attack in a school. As we speak, Israel is issuing evacuation orders for the whole of Gaza City again. Everybody told to get out. So Israel in front of the world saying, we're doing ethnic cleansing. A crime. They don't even pretend. They just do it. The determination which Europe displays when it comes to action on Ukraine is sadly missing, is it not? When this is going on for nine months, schools being blasted. Lancet's report is terrifying. Lancet is saying when you look at the devastation to schools, to power, to water, to electricity, the real death toll is likely to hit in the region of 186,000 people. Famine conditions, ethnic cleansing, no action. None. Words. Words. Now I ask, like, at what point do we just give up and say the European Union is just hypocritical, riddled with double standards, and has no intention whatsoever of doing anything to stop Israel, which they could do? Europe is uh, Israel's biggest trade partner. Weapons flow to uh, Israel from Europe. Uh, many of the states give political support to it. But like when is Europe going to use the power at its disposal to deter this genocide? And talk to Mick Bailey. Um, so I want to thank uh, colleagues for, for raising a variety, uh, a variety of issues. Um, look, firstly, Deputy Boyd Barrett and I don't agree on, on a lot on foreign affairs, but, but, I, but I have said in this house, I said it recently, I've said it at the European Council, I've said it publicly at the Peace Summit in Ukraine, that I do believe there's an inconsistency in approach being taken by many countries in relation to conflict, and not this one. Sorry. Because I've said before, I don't like this country being described as are we pro this or pro that. We're pro international law and we're pro-human rights. And that's the lens we bring to all conflict. So we think what's happening in the Middle East is utterly horrific, uh, is in the space of, uh, in a space that is almost unimaginable in terms of humanitarian catastrophe. We think the position in terms of Putin's Ill illegal invasion of Ukraine is also a despicable act of brutality, and we can speak out against both. And I do find it unfortunate that not all countries do that. And Ireland and Irish ministers continue to advocate in every international fora, with every leader, with every counterpart we engage with, uh, for an end to conflict and violence. Um, and we are extraordinarily consistent in relation to that. It's not for me to speak to other countries' foreign policies, but the European Union is a collection of member states with independent uh, foreign policy, uh, foreign affairs ministers, governments and the likes. And while people like to personalise this around President von der Leyen, the reality of the situation is if enough member states of the European Union, people who sit around the council table with me, were willing to back Ireland and Spain's call and somewhat Belgium's call in relation to review the trade agreement, it would happen. So I, I think the position of President von der Leyen has been misrepresented intentionally time and time again. Yes, in the early days after the most horrific terrorist attack, which is what it was, by the way, on the Israeli people in October, a horrific terrorist attack that saw the butchering and death of their people, um, heinous crimes, President von der Leyen visited Israel uh, and expressed solidarity with the people of Israel. Israel has moved well beyond, though, simply defending itself uh, to a position that is utterly unacceptable to us and I think to people right throughout the civilised world. She has supported UNRWA in terms of extra funding. This bell thing, everyone asks me questions, then you ring the bell and never answer the questions. I know that's not your fault. Um, she wants an immediate ceasefire. We believe in a two-state solution. That is now the unanimous view of the, that is the unanimous view of the European Council. So perhaps we can exchange views on how best to beat the far right uh, in the future. Um, but fundamentally, I, I'd be very interested to know the position of the left in this country as to what you do with Sinn Féin and any such alliance. <laughs>